So you got a sewing machine, but you're scared to even take it out of the box because you think it's gonna take a super long time to learn how to use it. Well, that's what I'm for. I'm Angelina and I'm gonna help you get it set up and start using it fast. All right, so the first thing you're going to do is actually take your sewing machine out of the box. You're gonna take off all the styrofoam, all the stickers from it, and you are going to find your accessories. You definitely wanna make sure if it came with accessories, you know where those are. Typically, you can find them behind the panel. A lot of them will fold down. This one pulls out and the accessories are right there. That's where you'll find extra needles, maybe extra feet, and also maybe a needle threader. And just for reference, this is a series. There's two videos before this where I taught you guys the types of sewing accessories as well as the names for all the parts on the sewing machine. I will put those links in the description box so that you can go back and know all those as well. And for this video, it's not gonna really matter too much what type of sewing machine you got, whether you got a mechanical, computerized, or mini. I'm going to show you references from all these types of machines to help us all get on the same level quickly. All right, after you unbox your sewing machine and you have it on a flat surface, preferably a desk or a table, the next thing you're gonna do is find your plug. Um, sometimes they'll come in two separate. You'll have where it looks like a little speaker plug and that's where you plug in the power and then you have a separate one that you plug in and that one plugs in the foot. This one is a combo and most full-size sewing machines come like this where it's a combination. You have a plug that looks like this, all brothers sewing machines look like this. Um, Singer has a different type of plug as well as Janome and Juki, but all of those sewing machines, if it is a full size, it has an outlet plug that goes off to one side as well as the foot that goes off to the other. Next, you'll get a spool of thread. This brand is a really common brand, Coates and Clark. If you wanna know more about thread, I have a whole video about it. This you can find at your local fabric store or online on Amazon or even at Walmart. So to start off, you're gonna take one spool of all-purpose thread. The reason I said all-purpose is because whatever you're sewing, even if you're just learning, practicing, all-purpose thread is the best thread that you can use because like the title says, it's for all or most purposes. And we're also gonna need a bobbin. And it goes at the bottom of the sewing machine in order to make the bottom stitch. So the way a sewing machine works is that the needle goes down and it loops with thread underneath, pulls up so that you have a very tight stitch that is holding the fabric together. This bobbin thread is the bottom part of that equation. Most sewing machines these days will make bobbins and some of the mini ones will be more difficult or different to thread. <laughs> but I'm gonna show you the standard way that most sewing machines thread bobbins. You're gonna take your spool of thread and you're gonna put it on the bobbin spool pin. If your sewing machine has the type of spool pin that comes out like this, you will have a spool pin cap as well that you'll need to put on. And that just keeps the thread from coming off of the spool pin once it's spinning. And if your sewing machine came with a spool pin that looks super short, just pull it up and then you can access the spool pin. And we're gonna need an empty bobbin. That's why I told you to find your accessories. Most sewing machines do come with extra bobbin. For most machines, you will find the instructions on how to wind the bobbin up at the top of the machine and how to thread the sewing machine all along as you go. And a lot of them will have numbers as to what you're supposed to do first and second. So the first thing we do here, we have a little diagram. We're going to put our thread over the thread guide. And then we're gonna take it around the bobbin winder disc because we're winding the bobbin and we're gonna take it over towards the bobbin winder pin. Now we're going to take the end of our thread and put it through the hole that's in the bobbin. Now we'll go ahead and put our bobbin on the bobbin winder pin. Sometimes there's a groove that matches up with the bobbin. And then you are going to take the bobbin winder pin and push it to the right. This is called the bobbin winder stop. Once there's enough thread on the bobbin, this tells it that there's enough thread and it'll start to stutter. Now we can go ahead and turn our sewing machine on and we're gonna press our pedal slowly while holding the thread. Once we have enough thread where we know it's not gonna come unthreaded, I normally just cut that short. And then we continue to wind our bobbin. All right, once it starts to stutter a little bit, then that lets you know it's done. Once it starts to touch the bobbin winder stop, and you can go ahead and cut it free. Now we're going to take this bobbin winder pin, pull it to the left, and pull the bobbin off. We'll set this aside because we'll thread this last. We're gonna thread our sewing machine. Looking back at the guide, it says number one, you go to the thread guide. Number two, you take it down 
this portion here. At this point, you also want to turn your hand wheel and make sure this take up lever is in its highest position. So we're going to take our thread down. That's the number two. You see the arrow there. We're going to go under. Number three says to go around and back up. We go behind the take up lever. Sometimes there's a little loop and you put the thread through the take up lever. And then you go behind the thread guide that is right above the needle. Sometimes you'll go in from the left hand side, sometimes you'll go on the right. You'll just have to find the opening and just a little help. My nail usually helps it. And now we are ready to put the thread through the needle. The thread will go through the needle from front to back. And this tutorial is not for handheld sewing machines or for industrial sewing machines. Here's a quick tip. When you are threading your needle, make sure you cut the tip of your thread. Come on, thread, go in. Especially new thread or, or whatever thread. If it hasn't been newly cut, sometimes that tip is just frayed. And it's going to go through the eye of the needle so much better if it is freshly cut versus frayed. Now, for most current sewing machines except for Janome's you're going to slide out the bobbin cover and now we can load our bobbin on the top of where the bobbin goes you can see a diagram normally that tells you how to wind the bobbin typically you want the bobbin thread to be coming from the left side going down this would be incorrect not from the right side and you're going to place it down in the bobbin case after we place it into the bobbin case we're going to bring it around and you're going to see a little hook here. Most sewing machines these days have a little plastic thing that you'll put it under, but this one doesn't. So you just find the little hook, bring it around, back past that, and there you go. And if you can't see your bobbin from the top, more than likely it's hidden underneath the storage container. This is common in Janome domestic machines as well as vintage machines. So you want to see if you can fold down a panel or remove that piece and then you can see it. It's going to be within a metal bobbin case. You want to grab the little tab and pull it out. You're going to hold it with the open part of the bobbin case pointing towards you and then you're going to install the bobbin the same way we did before with the thread going down to the left. Next you'll pull the thread through the slit and up into the little slot. Now hold it by the tab again. That keeps the bobbin from falling falling out and you want to put it back into the machine with that little hook part going up you'll see a slot for it once it's in the slot press it and you should hear it click once you have the bobbin loaded you can go ahead and replace the bobbin cover now you hold onto your thread with your left hand and turn the hand wheel forward and then it'll go down and grab the bobbin thread and pull it up you can see it is really short so sometimes I don't use the little cutter on the side to cut the thread because this is too short for me to grab without nails but i want to pull that forward and then i want to put both threads down underneath the foot and to the back now believe it or not you are ready to sew a couple of things you want to check before you sew is your stitches and your tension this is the tension dial to start off, your tension dial should be in between three and five. So anywhere in between that is fine. It is really going to depend on what we're sewing, how many layers, the thickness, but four in general to start off with should be good. Any sewing machine that doesn't sew decent on four, you might have gotten a dud. And I will tell you the first time I got this sewing machine, it was a dud. I had to take it back to the store. Next, the stitch type. Um, this does have like a mini version of a stitch type. Typically, you'll get to pick your stitch and then pick the stitch length and the stitch width. For this one, everything is in one dial. And so you can pick what type of stitch. This number 10 is the longest straight stitch. And then it has other stitches zigzag. And I can also dictate the stitch length right here. But since we are just starting, we are going to start off with a basic straight stitch. Normally, it'll be number one or number two on most sewing machines. All right, so at this point, we're ready to sew. Only other things you're going to need is a scrap piece of fabric and some scissors. For scissors, I wouldn't recommend anything fancy if you're first starting out. All you need to cut fabric is a newer pair of scissors. And the reason I say new is because if you've cut paper with the scissors, it makes the scissors dull. So if you go to Walmart and buy a $5 pair of scissors, that will be sufficient to start sewing. So I just randomly cut out a piece of fabric. This is from an old dress shirt that I actually used to upcycle something. So it was just scrap material anyway. Believe it or not, you're not alone in worrying about whether you threaded your sewing machine properly. For the first couple stitches, I like to use a scrap regardless 
regardless, just to make sure it sews properly and to make sure I have the tension where I want it. So you're gonna set it to sewing machine and you want a chair that allows your feet to sit flat onto the floor and your arms to not have to raise up too high. And you're gonna take the fabric, whatever it is. We're not worried about what it is. We wanna make sure it's flat. And in order to get the fabric underneath the presser foot, we wanna lift the presser lever. It's gonna to be to the right-hand side of the needle towards the back in most sewing machines. And then you're gonna put your fabric underneath and flip the presser lever down. Now, you want to make sure, because some sewing machines do have an extra lift, and you wanna make sure that the presser foot is all the way down touching the fabric. We are ready to sew. So you're going to gently put your foot on the presser foot and you're going to apply gentle pressure. For the first time, you don't wanna press really hard and have this thing take off on you. Some sewing machines do have a button on the side of the sewing machine that does allow you to use your hands. It's a start and stop button that allows you to not have to use the presser foot. But um, if you are using the presser foot, you're gonna apply gentle pressure and go ahead and start sewing. Once you get to the end of your stitch, you're going to pull your foot up and then you're going to turn your hand wheel so that the uptake lever is all the way up. You're going to lift the presser lever and you're gonna pull the thread free. There are some mini sewing machines that have a hard time with this. So you might have to rock that hand wheel back and forth in order to get the thread free, but you shouldn't have a problem with that. You might have a little knife on the side to cut the thread. You can go ahead and do that or just use scissors and cut it free. And you can see that stitch is great. And you're gonna check the front of your stitch and you're also gonna check the back of it. Now, let's do a little bit of troubleshooting. If your bobbin wasn't threaded properly, the stitch won't come out at all. You'll see a top, but you won't see a bottom. So that means you need to go ahead and take the bobbin out and try to re-thread it. Now, if the tension is wrong, I'm gonna show you what you'll see. When the tension was on one or two, you see how we have that really loose? And sometimes you can get bird nesting. That stitch is not gonna be good for anything. Look how that just pulls through. And even on our first stitch, we could adjust it a little bit, but you definitely should play around with the tension each time you sew something to get the exact stitch you want. So lastly, I'm going to show you how to sew a straight line. There are guides on the side that show if you want a 1 8 inch seam allowance, 3 8 inch seam allowance, 5 8 inch seam allowance, it'll let you know where to put the edge of the fabric. And so you just put the fabric on there, you line it up, and assuming you have a straight line, on the edge of your garment, then you're gonna line it up with whatever seam allowance you want. And all I wanna do is, as I'm sewing, I don't wanna look at the needle, I just wanna look at the edge of the fabric and make sure the edge of the fabric is on that line. All through the seam. can see I have a nice even stitch. I know that's one of the biggest concerns people have is I don't know how to sew straight. Just practice that. All right, so congratulations. You set up your sewing machine and made your first stitch. If your sewing machine is having issues, I hope the tips I gave you did help. If not, definitely put your issues in the comment section and I will do my best to try to get you up and running. We sewed a couple of stitches, but if you want to get more practice before you start making garments, here's a couple things you can do. So you can see this is a piece of fabric. It's just one layer. I drew straight lines on it. I used a ruler because drawing a straight line is hard, right? And I know most people think sewing a straight line is hard too. So with the lines on the fabric, that allows me to have a reference so that I can practice the control of keeping the fabric steady. You wanna line your needle up. You wanna have your hands one to the right, one to the left on each side of where the seam is gonna be. And you can also put it down to make sure that it's exactly where you want it to be. We're gonna put our hands there. We have nice control and we're gonna press the foot pedal. And just like when you first started learning how to drive, you wanna have your hands at 10 and two. In this case, it's more like eight and four. Lift the needle and the lever. And so you would go and sew all of these and practice. 
And then once you get that down, here's something else you can do. What I want you to do is find a piece of fabric, a square, a rectangle, something like this. And I want you to find a seam allowance length. It could be three eighths, it can be half, five eighths, whatever you wanna do. I'm gonna do half inch and I'm gonna start sewing till I get towards the end of this fabric. Then I'm gonna put the needle down, raise the presser lever and turn. Then I'm gonna sew this edge. Wherever I stop, we're gonna try to make a straight line. The needle down, press the lever up, turn. We're gonna sew again, put the needle down, lever up, and we're gonna go within half inch of the first line. And now we can't see the edge, but we can see the end. We're just gonna gauge by how much is on the side. And this one helps you further with sewing a straight line, as well as teaches you how to turn corners. About 80% of what I do in upcycling is just plain straight stitches. So once you get the concept of setting up your sewing machine and sewing a straight stitch, you're all good. So that's a little practice you can do. That's a little bit more advanced. I have another video coming up telling you how to start making your own clothes when you're broke. So if you're interested in that, definitely hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this video and you wanna support this channel, you can definitely add a little tip down there in the tip jar, that would be wonderful. But even if not, if you are sewing, if you were encouraged to sew, that makes me so happy. This is a whole series, so definitely check out the other videos in the series to get more educated on this topic, as well as videos about how to upcycle and how to turn your old clothes into amazing new clothes with just a few skills. So definitely check those out, and I will see you guys in the next one. All right, bye!